number 10 on my list of top 10 new findings this year is Cyclone Gassitao in 1988. The storm occurred right in the middle of the season, getting towards the later stage in the Southern Hemisphere, the Southwest Indian Ocean, forming on March the 12th and dissipating around the 25th. According to the JTWC, this storm peaked with winds of 150 miles per hour. Reunion went much lower with something like 110 miles per hour at its peak intensity. However, reanalysis by us on satellite analysis shows that this storm probably reached Category 5 status not once, but twice, and on the second occasion reached its probable peak intensity at 180 miles per hour and a pressure of 898 millibars. Unfortunately, geostationary satellite quality was appalling, and there could be grounds for upgrading the cyclone beyond the intensity of any others in the Southwest Indian Ocean analyzed so far. Currently, we've made it tie with the current record, Cyclone Fantala. The next new finding on my list was Cyclone Honorinina, which formed in March 1986. Originally, we have the storm at a wind speed of uh, 125 miles per hour and an estimated pressure of 940 millibars, which is around what the officials went with. Although recently we've uncovered the satellite imagery of the storm showing that it was much stronger, with a clear eye and very high cloud tops, suggesting this storm was probably 175 miles per hour at peak, an estimated pressure of 901. The storm made landfall in Madagascar on March the 15th, still a rather strong storm, uh, but weakened considerably from its peak by that point, and then rapidly weakened as it moved inland over Madagascar. The remnants of Honorinina uh, persisted, and some of it even as tropical, uh, well into the uh, following week as it headed on down towards the south, beyond Madagascar and out over the open southwest Indian Ocean. one pertains to a very interesting sequence in the tropics in the South Pacific in January 1985. Cyclone Drina formed to the northwest of Samoa and moved towards the south passing just east of Tonga, a fairly weak storm. Behind that was Eric which formed to the west of Vanuatu and moved through Fiji and then out through Tonga towards the southeast. Following that was Nigel and Odette and Nigel is the most interesting one out of the lot because this storm formed off the coast of Australia and like all the others that we've mentioned, moved eastwards. Nigel moved so far east that it started off the east coast of Australia and is the only storm to start from its current position to actually make landfall over in Fiji and Tonga, which it did. And then it continued eastwards a little bit longer before turning towards the south, then the southwest. Not only that, but this storm has received an enormous intensity upgrade by our reanalysis team. Initially just 60 miles per hour on our records, we've now put it at 150 miles per hour and a pressure of 922 millibars due to its excellent satellite appearance. Typhoon Marge was a very strong storm that struck the Korean Peninsula and some of the Japanese islands in August 1951. Now on the face of it, it doesn't look particularly interesting, especially if you go by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, which declared this storm to peak with winds of only 115 miles per hour, yet inexplicably with a remarkably low pressure of 886 millibars. So it became quite clear that one of these values is wrong. The question is, which? 
the Chinese Meteorological Administration went with no less than 200 miles per hour for the storm's peak, which didn't shed much light on the whole thing either. Well, it took quite a bit of research, but later it became clear, and with backing from a 2013 NOAA report, that Marge actually had winds probably of around 185 miles per hour, and the 886 millibar reading is the one that is definitely true. The reason they came up with 115 miles per hour is that somehow, and this is a little bit of interesting trivia, in the recon flights in the storm, no less than Robert Simpson was on that flight, observing the typhoon and reported from the plane that the storm had at least 115 mile per hour winds from his reckoning. So that's what they went with, even though at least 115 could really mean anything above that. Most people recall Typhoon Nipatak, which occurred in 2016. It was a very dull start to the season until this storm uh, shook everything up in July. Now, a Category 5, obviously, and there's still quite a bit of uh, difference in some people's estimates of the storm's intensity. Uh, first, you had operationally that buoy near Taiwan, suggesting that the pressure could have been 897 millibars. That was apparently discounted and then apparently it went with 900 millibars and that's what we ran with at the end of the season, 175 mile per hour winds and 900. However, new analysis has come to light this year calling for an upgrade to the storm based on new satellite eye temperature data with a highest recorded temperature of the eye from satellite of 29.6 degrees analysis assuming a conservative two hour smooth average of 28 degrees celsius which merits the storm a 10 mile an hour upgrade to 185 miles per hour and an estimated central pressure now down to 887. July can often be an unassuming month, but quite often, on some occasions at least, there can be big surprises. And one of these surprises happened in the year 1780, when an enormous typhoon struck Macau on July 17th. This caused around 100,000 fatalities, which ironically beats out the Atlantic hurricane season's record for that year's fatality list. Whilst there are no concrete figures, Damage and surge descriptions would suggest that this storm was at least a Category 4 landfall in the area when it struck. There isn't much more information beyond that, but it's definitely worth mentioning and highlighting in this sequence of videos. Most people know that Typhoon Nora in 1973 was one of the most intense tropical cyclones on record, officially rated at 877 millibars. And that's a very interesting number because that actually occurred not in the center of the storm and possibly not even at the storm's peak. Regrettably, we don't have any more information that could help us triangulate the actual pressure of this storm, but one could make a case that it would approach TIP's record. We're not saying it here, however, but on a 2013 NOAA report, estimated the storm to have winds of 208 miles per hour with that 877 millibar pressure. Once again, bearing in mind that the pressure estimate was not at the storm's center. So in accordance to that, we have increased the wind speed from 185 estimated to 215 miles per hour and an estimated pressure of 874 millibars, which is what we held at earlier in our previous analysis of the storm some years ago, based on that very uncertain pressure number. A remarkable new finding that was uncovered in July of this year 2020. In the North Indian Ocean 
a cyclone that was actually determined to have originated near the Philippines, likely small in size and moved fairly slowly over the southern Visayas. Eventually the storm developed into a typhoon before it reached Thailand. This was in late October 1891. The storm reportedly peaked over Koh Samui, destroying the island and possibly killing up to 6,000. The population on the island at the time is unknown, but it is known that only 39 survived. The storm then arrived on the Malay Peninsula, destroying 4,625 buildings and killing at least 109, possibly even gaining strength as it moved over the peninsula as the greatest wind damage was reported inland and on the other side of the peninsula on Zedetki Island. The typhoon then passed over Port Blair, where we previously found a 939 millibar pressure report. With this is more information about likely sustained winds of 145 miles per hour before the instruments broke. The storm then made landfall in Odisha, India as a weaker storm with an estimated pressure of 950 millibars and estimated winds of 125 miles per hour gusting to 150. This cyclone reportedly killed 7,401 in Thailand, although suggested numbers could be as high as 12,000. No deaths were recorded in India. The storm was likely a high-end Category 4 or a Category 5 when it made landfall in Thailand. Our peak estimate lies at 155 miles per hour and a pressure of 919 millibars. Typhoon Ida in 1945 is another fascinating case that has gone through multiple reanalyses. In 2019, we uncovered that the storm was probably much stronger than the 90 miles per hour that it's been officially rated and a pressure of 969. We found a newly discovered measurement from the Japan Meteorological Agency finding that the pressure fell to 916 millibars near the southern tip of Kyushu due to the storm, which apparently passed significantly to the south. No evidence substantiates whether the storm was stronger before passing Kyushu or whether or not it made landfall there. As previously mentioned, the storm killed at least 2,700. Some reports list as many as 130,000, but this most likely includes the bombings that occurred not so long before. But in 2020, we stumbled upon some more astonishing data. A US hospital ship which passed through the eye of the storm recorded winds of 175 miles per hour and a pressure of 864 millibars among 75 foot seas. Extensive research depicts the upper limit estimate at 891 millibars. We're not sure we can trust the 864 for obvious reasons. Of course, that would be six millibars below the current record, with the measurement being the lower bound 864. So we think it's somewhere between 864 and 891, and more research, I'm sure, will be forthcoming to attempt to narrow down that estimate. And finally, the top find from this year in terms of things that we've found that have changed our perception of storms or the data at hand, the most surprising finds. On April the 15th, 2020, we uncovered something that I personally never thought I would see, is finding a storm that occurred before the accepted record of the first ever tropical cyclone. Now, at the moment, it is suggested that the first recorded cyclone operationally uh, were two typhoons that occurred in 1274 and 1281 when Kublai Khan attempted to invade Japan for the Mongol Empire and was routed by these two typhoons and ultimately failed. Well, we believe that to be the oldest in the worldwide record for which there is operational evidence, but now we've found a new one a typhoon that struck central Japan in September 989. And since we don't currently include paleotempestologically detected storms, this is now the oldest storm on the Force 13 database. <laughs> 